Hello students, how are you? I hope you are still safe. I am still teacher Hilda, your English teacher uh, for senior three. Uh, I want to remind you that this program is brought to you by the Rwanda Education Board in partnership with MasterCard Foundation and Inspire, Educate and Empower Rwanda. So I want us to first remind ourselves what we have been looking at in the previous lessons. So we have been looking at conditional sentences, or you can call them if sentences. And we say that you, you can call them if clauses or conditional sentences. And we said that conditional sentences are statements uh, that are used to describe the condition and the result of an action. We said that uh, conditional sentences are statements that are used to describe the condition and the result of an, of an action. And we also say that we have different types of conditional sentences. We have different types of conditional sentences and majorly we have, we have four types. Uh, we have the first conditional sentence, you can call them the if ones. We have the second conditional sentences, you can call them the if twos. Uh, we have the third conditional sentences, you can call them the if threes. We also have the zero conditional sentences. We also have the zero conditional sentences. So those are four first conditional sentences, if ones, second conditional sentences, if twos, third conditional sentences, if three, zero conditional sentences uh, in brackets. Uh, in the previous lessons, we have so far looked at three types of conditional sentences. We looked at zero conditional sentences. We looked at first conditional sentences. We looked at second conditional sentences. So today we are going to look at third conditional sentences. But before we look at third conditional sentences, I want us to first remind ourselves and give examples of the different types of conditional sentences we looked we looked at. We are going to start with zero conditional sentences. Can anyone tell me what zero conditional sentences are? So we say that um, zero conditional sentences express general truth situations in which one thing always causes a another in which one thing always causes another in other words one thing is going to lead to another and we gave examples like if you hit ice it is going to melt if you hit ice it is going to melt if it rains if it rains the grass is going to get wet if it rains if it rains the grass is going to get wet uh, we also said that when using zero conditionals the correct tense to use for both clauses is the simple present tense. Uh, the correct tense uh, for both sentences, that is the if clause and the main clause, is the simple present tense. Uh, the word if and when can be used interchangeably in these zero conditional sentences. Uh, let us still look at the example of if it rains, the grass gets wet. So you see that the if clause is in the simple present tense and the main clause is also in the simple present, is also in the simple present tense. I hope you still remember that. So we also looked at the first conditional sentences. We also looked at the first conditional, first conditional sentences. And what did we say about first conditional sentences? Can anyone remind us, can anyone define for us what first conditional sentences are? We said that first conditional sentences are used to express situations, express situations in which the outcome is likely. Remember, the outcome is likely, but this outcome is not guaranteed. The outcome is likely to happen in the future. The first conditional sentences express situations in which the outcome is likely. This outcome is likely. It might happen, it might not happen, meaning the outcome is not guaranteed to happen in the, to happen in the future. So I want you to look at these examples. If you study medicine, if you study medicine, you will become a 
doctor. If you study medicine, you will become a doctor. Now, you have seen that if the condition is if you study medicine and what is the outcome, you will become a doctor. It is not a guarantee that you're going to study medicine. You might study some other some other course. So first conditional sentences talk about situations that are likely to happen in the future. We don't talk about the past, but we talk about the we talk about the future. If I see Mary, if I see Mary, I will tell her. If I see Mary, I will tell her. If Paul retires, if Paul retires, he will start a company. He will start a company. So we also say that we use the simple present tense in the if clause and the simple future tense in the main clause. We use the simple present tense in the if clause. I want you to pay attention to that. I want to read for you another example and you look at uh, the simple present tense in the if clause. If I have enough money, if I have enough money, that is the if clause and the tense is simple present or present simple. If I have enough money. So when we come to the main clause, the main clause uses the simple future tense. The simple future tense, I will buy some new shoes. I will buy some new shoes. So we have said that the if clause in the in first conditional sentences uses the simple present. So you talk about the present in the if clause. But when it comes to the main clause, when it comes to the main clause, then the tense has to be simple future because of the likelihood of the outcome. So um, I hope you still remember that. So we also looked at Second conditional sentences. Second conditional sentences. Is there anyone there who still remembers what second conditional sentences are? So we said that second conditional sentences are useful for expressing outcomes that are completely unrealistic or are not likely to happen in the future. We can say second conditional sentences are useful for expressing outcomes that are completely unrealistic. These outcomes are completely unrealistic and are not likely to happen in the, in the future. So I want you to look at these examples. If I inherited a billion dollars, if I inherited a billion dollars, I would travel to the moon. I would travel to the Moon. So you see how unrealistic it is. And let me read to you another example. Let me give you another example. Uh, it reads, If she fell, she would hurt herself. If she fell, she would hurt her. She would hurt herself. So we also said that we use the simple past tense. We use the simple past tense in the if clause. And an auxiliary modal verb. An auxiliary modal verb. And I remember giving you examples of auxiliary modal verbs. We said we have could, should, would, might. So we use the auxiliary modal verb in the main, in the main clause. The main clause is the one that expresses unrealistic or un or unlikely, unlikely outcome. If I owned a zoo. If I owned a zoo, I might let people interact with the animals more. I would let people interact with the animals, with the animals more. So you have seen that the if clause, which is if I owned a zoo, uh, uses the simple past, the simple past tense. If I owned a zoo, and the main clause uses a modal auxiliary verb or an auxiliary modal verb, which is might. And in this case, we have, I might let people interact with the animals more. I might let people interact with the animals, with the animals more. So you can also come up with different examples. I hope you still remember uh, zero conditional sentences, first conditional sentences, and the second conditional, second conditional sentences. So before we look at um, the 
third conditional sentences. I want you to remind yourself, try to construct some examples, const construct some sentences uh, in the zero conditional sentences, then first conditional sentences, then second conditional sentences. Okay, I hope you have tried to write down your examples and you have them right. Now, today we are going to look at third conditional sentences. We are going to look at third conditional sentences. Is there anyone who knows what third conditional sentences are? Anyone? So, before we define what third conditional sentences are, I want you to write third conditional sentences as your subheading and underline it. I want you to write third conditional sentences as your subheading and underline it. Okay, the subheading is third conditional, third conditional sentences. Or you can call them if threes. You can put in brackets if three. So, we use the third conditional to talk about hypothetical or unreal situations in the past. Uh, we use the third condition to talk about hypothetical or unreal conditions in the, in the past. We can say that these, these third conditional sentences are used to explain the present circumstance that would have been different if something different had happened in the if something different had happened in the past. I want you to look at these examples. If you had told me you needed a ride, if you had told me you needed a ride, I would have left earlier. I would have left earlier. If I had cleaned the house, if I had cleaned the house, I could have gone to the movies. I could have gone to the, to the movies. If I had worked harder, if I had worked harder, I would have passed the exams. I would have passed the exams. So I want us to go back to the to our definition. Our definition says that third conditionals talk about hypothetical or unreal situations in the in the past. So if we look at this example, if I had worked harder, I would have passed the exam. If I had worked harder, I would have passed the exam. But I did not work hard and I did not pass the and I did not pass the exam. So the reason as to why we say that the present circumstance would be different if something different had happened in the past is because that if this person had worked hard, if this person had worked hard, meaning that this person would have done what? Would have passed the the exam, what circumstance do we have at hand right now? The circumstance we have at hand right now is that this person failed the, failed the exam. Why? Because he or she did not work, did not work hard. So if I had worked harder, if I had worked harder, I would have passed the, I would have passed the exam. Another example. If I had known you were coming, if I had known you were coming, I would have baked a cake. I would have baked a cake. Now, in this sentence, I did not know that you were coming, so I did not do what? I did not bake the, the cake. For example, if, if someone visits me and they did not announce their visit, if they don't find food, meaning they did not do what? they did not inform me. Now, I, I go back to the point that the present situation have been different. If I have a visitor right now and I have not given them food, it means that they did not do it. They did not tell me that they were, they were coming. That is why there is no, there is no food. So another example is, I would have been happy, I would have been happy if you had called me on my birthday. I would have been happy if you had called me on my birthday. So, but you did not call me and you see, that is why I'm not, I'm not happy. The current situation is I'm not happy because something did not happen in the, in the past. 
So I want to read to you other examples, but before I read to you other examples, I want you to try to give me examples of the third conditional. I want you to construct sentences using the third conditional. So my other examples are, if they hadn't come, if they hadn't come, I would have been disappointed. If they hadn't come, I would have been disappointed. She would have been sorry. She would have been sorry if she had missed it. If she had missed it. She would have been sorry if she had missed, if she had missed it. So when we talk about third conditional sentences, we use the past perfect. We use the past perfect in the if clause and the model auxiliary. I gave you examples of the model auxiliary in the main clause. The main clause expresses the theoretical situation that could have happened. Now, past perfect. If I had worked harder, if I had worked harder, remember the past perfect is hard plus the past participle. Had plus the past participle. If I had plus worked harder, the past participle. And then our, our main clause, the main clause uh, ha must have the model auxiliary. And I gave you examples like would, could, might, among others. So you use in, the, in the our main clause, you have a model auxiliary. You have have plus past participle. I would have, okay? I would have plus the past participle, which is past the exam. I would have passed the exam. So that is the main clause. And in the main clause, the main clause expresses the theoretical situation that could have, that could have happened. Come along. So before we do an exercise, I want us to go back and look at what we have studied today. What are third conditional sentences? So we have said we use the third conditional sentences to talk about hypothetical or unreal situations in the, in the past. Or you can say that um, third conditional sentences are used to explain that present circumstances would have been different if something different had happened. So these sentences express a condition that was likely enough, that was likely enough, but did not actually happen in the, in the past. They express a condition that was likely enough, but did not actually, but did not actually happen. So I've given you different examples, and I have said that we use the past perfect that is had plus past participle. We use the past perfect plus a model auxiliary verb plus have plus past participle in the main in the main clause. And I'll give you an example. If they hadn't come, if they hadn't come, remember the past perfect is had plus past participle. If they hadn't hadn't come plus the past participle, I would have been disappointed. Remember, we said it, uh, in the main clause, we have the model auxiliary verb. We have have, and then we have the past participle. And then you see, I would, as our model auxiliary verb, have been disappointed. Been disappointed, our past participle. So, if I hadn't come, I would have been disappointed. That is why we, we say that we use the past perfect. We use the past perfect and a model auxiliary verb plus have and the past, the past participle. So we are going to write an exercise and I want you to write these instructions in your books. I'm going to first read out the questions and then I'll give you time to answer those questions. Then we shall come back and we shall mark ourselves and look at the answers we and look at the answers we have. So the instructions read complete 
the conditional sentences, complete the conditional sentences by putting the verb by putting the verb in by putting the verb in brackets by putting the verb in brackets into the correct form into the correct form use conditional to with would in the main clause use conditional to with would in the main in the main clause i'm going to read the instructions again complete the conditional sentences by putting the verb in brackets by putting the verb in brackets into the correct form into the correct form full stop and the continuation use conditional to with would in the main clause use conditional to with would in the main clause number one reads if you open brackets if you open brackets study close brackets study close brackets dash dash for the test for the test comma for the test comma you open brackets you open brackets pass pass close brackets dash dash it full stop if you open brackets study close brackets dash for the test comma you open brackets pass close brackets dash it full stop if you open brackets ask close brackets if you open brackets ask close brackets dash me dash me comma i open brackets i open brackets help help close brackets dash dash you full stop you full stop if you open brackets ask close brackets dash me comma i open brackets help close brackets dash you full stop number three if we open brackets go if we open brackets go close brackets dash dash to the cinema comma to the cinema comma we open brackets c close brackets we open brackets c close brackets dash my friend jacob my friend jacob number four if you open brackets if you open brackets speak speak close brackets dash english dash english comma she open brackets she open brackets understand understand close brackets dash dash full stop number five if they open brackets if they open brackets listen or listen close brackets dash dash to me comma to me comma we open brackets we open brackets b close brackets dash home earlier if they open brackets listen close brackets dash to me comma we open brackets b close brackets dash home earlier i want you to answer those questions
So I want us to come back and mark ourselves and look at the answers we have. Uh, what answer do you have for number one? What answer do you have for number one? Okay, I'm going to be reading out the full sentence and I want you to mark yourself. Number one, if you had studied for the test, if you had studied for the test, comma, you would have passed it. You would have passed it. If you had studied for the test, comma, you would have passed it. Full stop. So I want you to cross check with your answers. Do you have this as your answer? If you have it right, then I want you to mark yourself. And then if you don't have it as your, as your answer, I want you to write down the right answer. So the answer would have been had studied and would have. Number two, the answer reads, if you had asked me, if you had asked me, I would have helped you. I would have helped you. If you had asked me, I would have helped you. Number three, number three, if we had gone to the cinema, if we had gone to the cinema, we would have seen my friend Jacob. If we had gone to the cinema, we would have seen my friend Jacob. Number four, if you had spoken English, if you had spoken English, she would have understood. If you had spoken English, she would have understood. Number five, if they had listened to me, if they had listened to me, we would have been home earlier. We would have been home earlier. If they had listened to me, we would have been home earlier. So I want you to cross check your answers and see what answers you have. If you have five out of five, then that's good. If you, uh, sorry, it should be 10 because each question had uh, two dashes. So if you have 10 out of 10, then that's good. If you don't have 10 out of 10, I want to encourage you to do it, to keep trying. Don't lose hope, keep trying. We are all learners. And the more we learn, the more we shall do what? The more we shall learn. Come along and play with us. So I want to conclude our lesson for today. Today we have looked at third conditional sentences. And we said th these sentences express a condition that was likely enough but did not actually happen in the actually happen in the past and we say that we use the past perfect uh, in the if clause plus the model auxiliary plus have plus past participle in the main in the main clause thanks for being good students i uh, want you to stay safe see you in the next lesson bye bye Goodbye, 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 teacher. Goodbye, children. See you next time. Goodbye, 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 teacher. Goodbye, children. 